In the Circuit Court 7th Judicial Circuit in and for Flagler County, Florida, State of Florida versus Keith John Johansson, case number 2018-426 CFFA, Judge Christopher France, verdict. Count one of the indictment. We, the jury, find the defendant, Keith John Johansson, as follows to count one of the indictment. Guilty as charged as the crime of first degree murder. So say we all date at Benel, Flagler County, Florida, this 28th day of October. Madam Clerk, please pull the jury. Jury number one, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes, ma'am. Jury number two, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number three, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number four, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number five, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number six, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number seven, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number eight, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Jury number nine, is this your true and correct verdict? Jury number ten, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 11, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 12, is it true and correct verdict? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you for your time and consideration of this case. I also wish to advise you some very special privileges enjoyed by jurors. No juror can ever be required to talk about the discussions that occurred in the jury room except by court order. For many centuries, our society has relied upon juries for consideration of difficult cases. We have recognized for hundreds of years that a jury's deliberations, discussions, and votes should remain their private affair as long as they wish it. Therefore, the law gives you a unique privilege not to speak about the jury's work. Although you are at liberty to speak with anyone about your deliberations, you are also at liberty to refuse to speak to anyone. A request to discuss either your verdict or your deliberations may come from those who are simply curious, from those who might seek to find fault with you, from the media, from the attorneys, or elsewhere. It will be up to you to decide whether to preserve your privacy as a juror. Now that's the uh, standard instruction and, and uh, the both parties. All the attorneys and myself would like to thank each and every one of you for your hard, hard work. You obviously uh, 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 fulfilled your role honorably and, and took your de deliberation seriously and applied yourselves. And we would all like to thank for your efforts both tonight and all week. Okay. Thank you very much. And now you'll be escorted. Uh, if you can take everything, leave your notebooks, um, either in the jury room if, if they're there or here, and my bailiff um, will collect those and I will uh, destroy your notes um, tonight before we leave. And if you have any other items, just go ahead and grab those and we'll uh, escort you out the back way. Okay? Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. What's that? They have their excusal forms, David. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. All right, so there it is. Keith Johansson found guilty of first-degree murder in the murder of his wife, Brandy Salenza. Uh, it took this jury of eight men and four women two hours and 50 minutes uh, to reach that verdict. Uh, they did have a few questions suggesting that they were dealing with some issues regarding reasonable doubt. Looks like they, they figured those out and came back uh, with this guilty, guilty verdict. Let's listen. I do adjudicate you guilty of the crime. And what is to sentencing? Yes, sir. I have the opportunity to file an appropriate motion. Okay. Judge, we would ask the sentence today. He can still file a motion to 10 days from the date of the verdict. And we can certainly address that. But the state would ask for a sentence today. The entire family is here. And everybody is taking time out of their schedules and moving from out of town here, some folks. Okay. We can uh, do the, uh, the as charged conviction, proceed to sentencing today. Understand that there's a motion. Motion's coming. Y'all right, may be seated. State. Take your time. Okay, that's fine. 
So it looks as though the judge said they're going to proceed to sentencing today. He's waiting. I guess they're waiting to get their ducks in a row there, the prosecution. But he's going to hear motions on the sentencing and then pronounce sentence. Of course, he is facing life in prison without the possibility of parole for that first-degree murder charge. Quickly, um, Kirk Nurmi, I want to bring you in real quick and get your reaction to that verdict. Ms. Uh, Amber, you come yeah, Michael. We were just talking a minute ago how they gave real due consideration the jury to everything involved. But ultimately, I think the evidence was just too overwhelming for the defense in this so case, and the verdict was a just one. Fair, any, fair enough. Well, let's see who's in the courtroom now. family, you can uh, do that now. Brandy wasn't just my sister. She was my best friend. She was a mother. She was a daughter. She was young. She still had a whole life to go. And he just took her away and nobody was able to say anything. And And being in jail is great for freaking him. He gets to live as we still have to suffer inside with my sister gone and knowing and have to deal with Rylan growing up knowing his mom is not here with us. Thank you. Your Honor, that's all as far as um, any comments from the family. Obviously, with a conviction of first-degree murder, the only lawful sentence in the state of Florida is a sentence of life, so we would ask you to impose that sentence of life without parole. Judge, unfortunately, that is the only sentence that can be imposed on a first-degree murder uh, conviction. Hearing no legal bar to sentencing, having been adjudicated guilty of the crime of first degree premeditated murder, Mr. Johansson, I do sentence you to life in prison in the custody of the Florida Department of Corrections without the possibility of parole for the murder of Ms. Salenza. Okay. You have 30 days to appeal both the imposition of this judgment and sentence as well as the proceedings that we've conducted this week, meaning the trial. If you're unable to uh, afford an attorney to do that, we'll appoint one for you. You understand that? Okay. All right. Anything further? No, Your Honor. Okay. Courts and recess. All right, so there you see the defendant, uh, uh, Keith Johansson. Um, he seemed ready when the, the verdict was read. He threw up his hands, ready for the handcuffs. Uh, as you heard there, the sentence was pronounced by the judge, life in prison without the possibility of parole. Uh, we actually heard from the, who I believe was the sister of the victim in this case, Brandy Salenza. Um, she said she was young, she was vibrant, she was a mother, she was a daughter. Um, and, and one thing interesting that she said that uh, I want to recount is she said, you know what, oh great, jail is great for him because he gets to live. Just an interesting, interesting perspective there in her victim impact statement. Our producer on the scene there did mention uh, to us that um, all of the family in the courtroom burst out into tears uh, when the original verdict was read by the jury. So uh, Brandy was represented in that courtroom. And again, you heard from her sister there.